Hello, my name is Julie Zeruba Fountain, and I am the Wellness Coordinator for the College of St. Scholastica. Welcome to the webinar series, Stewardship in Seconds. Each webinar in this series focuses on a different aspect of well you. Today's topic, motivation and goal setting, falls under the aspect of living healthy. First, we're going to start by discussing what motivation is. Motivation is the inner drive for success. It is much easier to sustain and reach our goals if you have motivation. Without clear goals, it's easy to bounce back and forth between other people's ideas of what you should do with your life. This presentation is going to help us to look at some ways to reach our goals and meet and sustain our motivation. First, we're going to start out by asking ourselves some goal-oriented questions. To help define your goals, you can ask yourself, what are my dreams for the future? What do I want to be? Do I enjoy my career? Or what are some of my values? When we're creating our goals, it's important to help us know how we're motivated. For instance, are we motivated intrinsically to reach our goals? That would be if we are motivated to complete a task because it has a personal meaning to us and gives us a certain level of satisfaction. If this is the case, it's going to be much easier for us to reach our goals. If we're motivated extrinsically or from an external source, it provides some level of motivation, but not quite as much as it were from an internal source. Another factor in motivation is our locus of control. Our locus of control is where you place the responsibility for events in our life that happen to us. If we have an internal locus of control, you place responsibility on yourself and you feel like you have control over events in your life. For example, you have control over whether or not you can reach your goals. If you have an external locus of control, you place responsibility on others. For example, you feel others may influence you to the point that you won't be able to reach your goals. Also thinking about the type of language we use is important. Individuals that use a creator language will take full responsibility for their behaviors and their beliefs. For example, they believe that success depends on how hard they work. They try to make the best of every situation. They believe that they create their own destiny, and they think positively about life and work. They also rely on internal motivation. If you're using some victim language, they may believe that events are due to fate, chance, or luck. They may look for someone to blame when things go wrong, or believe that supervisors give them certain evaluations instead of them earning them. They also think negatively about life and work and they rely on external motivation. Some of the things that you may notice in victims or in creators are victims tend to make excuses, they blame others, they'll complain, they believe they have to do things, they pretend that their problems belong to others, and they'll give up. Creators, on the other hand, they will seek solutions, they'll accept responsibility, they'll take action, they will choose to do things, they own their problems, and they take control of their choices. Some of this language is very important in when we're setting goals and we, when we are determining our level of motivation. If we're thinking of things as what we want to do or choose to do, rather than what we have to do, we'll have a more positive outlook on what we're trying to accomplish and therefore increase the odds of us actually accomplishing and enjoying our task. So next time you're thinking about a task, use the phrase, I choose to, instead of I need to or have to, or I want to, instead of I have to or need to. This will help you frame that task in a positive mindset. An example of this victim versus creator language is an employee did poorly on a work project. 
a creator would admit that they did not prepare as much as they could have. A victim would blame the supervisor for not explaining the material thoroughly. Now on to setting goals. Setting clear and concise goals will help you stay motivated when times are tough. Change is hard, goals, reaching goals is hard, so we need some sense of motivation. And being able to track your progress and sustain that progress is essential into reaching your goals. It's very helpful to write down both your long and short-term goals to help you track your progress. Long-term goals provide you with the big picture of your life. They should be things that you want to accomplish in a year or longer. And short-term goals are stepping stones towards accomplishing your long-term goals. For every long-term goal, you should have several short-term goals in place to help you track and maintain motivation. Now, when you're setting these goals, they should be SMART goals. Some of you may be familiar with SMART goals. SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Specific goals should be clear and to the point. When setting a specific goal, you know exactly what you need to do to accomplish this goal and gain more satisfaction from doing so. That's very important. It needs to be satisfying in order for you to attain it. It also should be measurable, which means they provide a time frame and a foreseeable outcome. If it's not measurable, how can you be sure that you're making progress towards your goal? Next, it should be achievable. This means that the goal is realistic for you to accomplish. If your goals are too high, you will not be able to achieve them and your self-esteem may suffer. If your goals are too low, you might not gain a satisfaction from achieving them. They also should be relevant. Goals must be relevant and important to you. Effective goals are your own, they're not someone else's. For example, if a supervisor often finds it difficult to achieve goals they set, but it's important to their supervisor, then it's not very important to them. So you need to make sure that when you're setting your goals, you not only speak with your supervisor when setting goals, but also think about things that are important to you. Also, they should be timely. Goals should include specific deadlines. A short-term goal usually includes a deadline of a month or two. A long-term goal usually has a deadline of one to five years. Now onto some examples of SMART goals. The first one is not a SMART goal, which is improve our student service. A SMART version of this goal would be achieve and maintain an average student service rating of 4.0 out of 5 possible on our annual survey by November 20th, 2015. So it includes that SMART, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely goals, all wrapped into one. The second example, improve project management skills. Then you'll see it reframed into a SMART goal. Take the project management essentials workshop and report what was learned to the team by that date. Then apply the relevant concepts while implementing our marketing plan. So you'll see those two goals were reworked into the SMART example. Now, Let's go on to some goal setting tips. The first one is write down your goals. The second one, post your goals where you can see them. Constantly reminding yourself of those goals will help you to stay focused and on task. Then reward yourself for accomplishing goals. Now we'll all come into roadblocks when we're trying to achieve goals, but there's certain roadblocks that you either create for yourself or that come from an outside source. Internal, internal barriers are roadblocks you create for yourself and external are roadblocks that come from an outside source. Roadblocks to achieving your goals, like I mentioned, can be broken down into internal and external. The internal include bad habits or unhealthy habits poor time management, lack of self-confidence, and negative thinking. 
external roadblocks include people who think you can't succeed at something, few jobs available in your field, or becoming sick or taking some time off from work. The problems arise when you let external problems or barriers become internal barriers. For example, letting people, letting what people think prevent you or deter you from reaching one of your goals. There also are detours, forks, and some dead ends when it comes to goal setting. So what happens if you don't reach your goal? Do you view it as a failure or a detour or a fork in the road or a dead end? Failure can actually be a very valuable learning experience if you try to view it as a detour or a fork in, fork in the road rather than a dead end. It's a perfect opportunity to reevaluate what you're doing. So on to reevaluating your goals. If you're at a detour or a fork in the road, Think about what you've learned from the experience and reevaluate that goal. Did you use the SMART principles in setting that goal? Did you ask family or friends for help in reaching your goals? You can also try to predict barriers that may get in the way of your goal and develop a plan for overcoming these barriers. So now comes for the interactive part of today's webinar. We want to practice. So on the WellU website, there's a SMART goal worksheet that's available for you to fill out. And you can prepare your goal, you can check your level of re re readiness, and you can make it a SMART goal. The next steps and the last part of this presentation is sharing your draft with someone who can help you. Check in with your manager for perspective. They can give you some perspective on the priorities, you can share your level of readiness with them, and you can enlist support. Also, finalizing your goal, reworking any aspects that you think may be weak and not in line with the SMART principles. And you can set a plan to create windows of win. Then track, review, adjust, and record your progress. This should all help you in reaching your new goals and giving you the motivation you need to attain your goals. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please email me or go to the WellU website. As mentioned previously, this webinar is part of the WellU Stewardship in Seconds webinar series. Be sure to check out the other topic areas, including finding balance, eating well, getting fit, managing money, practicing sustainability, and seeking spirituality. On a final note, take up care of your body. It is the only place you have to live. What can you do today to take care of your body? For example, can you set a wellness goal for yourself that's framed in the SMART goal format? Try it and see if you continue to take the steps you need to accomplish your goal. Thanks again and be well.